Coding an entire inventory and equipment system can easily take at least 100 hours, especially if you want it to be networked, and if you want NPCs to be able to give the player items, or have a quest where you have to find an item, you have to code your whole quest and dialogue system and integrate the inventory with it. You can see how this becomes a behemoth of a task. Today though, with narrative inventory, we're going to do all of that in under 20 minutes. And we'll also take a look at the seamless Narrative 3 integration so your quests and dialogues play nicely with your inventory items as well. And if you don't have 20 minutes available, that's fine. The completed project files will be in the description to download as well. To follow along with today's tutorial, you will need to own a copy of Narrative Inventory. The link to grab it will be in the description. And make sure that you install it to Unreal Engine 5.3 because that's what we're going to be using today. The starter project will be in the description below. Simply download that unzip it. Uh, you won't have all these folders. You'll just have config and content. That's okay. And open the Unreal Engine project up. Make sure you have Unreal Engine 5.3 because that's what this project is. 5.3 or later will work. All right, so we're here in the third person template project. It's literally just the normal third person project. I just changed the character to a metahuman. And that's just so I don't have to explain how to add metahumans to a project because it's a little bit outside of the scope of this video. To make sure we have the plugin enabled, go to Edit Plugins, Narrative. You can see Narrative Inventory is turned on. I've got it installed. Um, we're using Unreal Engine 5.3. We're going to right click and Narrative. You can see Narrative Items shows up. So the first thing to do is add the inventory system to the character. I added a player stat to the project already. So if you just open it up, you just have to add a inventory component to it. You can compile and save. And we'll also open the player controller. And we're going to put the inventory uh, UI on the screen when the player presses tab. So if you just search for tab, we will create a piece of UI, create widget. If you search for default inventory, that should come up. And then just simply add it to the screen by doing add to viewport like that. Compile, save. In the player state, you can actually add some default items. So I'm just going to add example item A. And if we compile and save and hit play, pressing tab will show you the inventory screen. And you can see I've got one of this example item in my inventory. But obviously, we don't want just example items. We're going to add some actual real items. And um, yeah, so we'll remove that from default items. So. With Narrative Inventory, you can literally create any item you like. There's really no limit, uh, but let's do a common one. A lot of people want to make food in their games, so we're going to add a food folder, and we're going to make a new type of item. So to do that, you just go to Narrative Items, Narrative Item, and we'll say BPNI underscore food. So this is a food item. And we'll fill out some of the defaults. So we could give it a default name, food item, some yummy food for the weight we could say 200 grams consume on use you want it to be true basically if it's true one of the item will be consumed every time you use the item that makes a lot of sense for something like food um, you eat the item, so that's the use action text is eat and that looks good to me um, so if we compile and save that the other thing i'm going to do is add a variable we'll say health to heal because we're going to make it that food items should heal your player so we'll make that a float as well once you've added health to heal if you go to class defaults you can set a default value we'll just say that by default food items should heal 20 health so we've made the base class for our food now we'll just make a bunch of food items so just right click create child and i'll call this one food underscore chicken nugget and you can duplicate by pressing control d so if i duplicate the nugget I'm going to make another one called baguette and control D again and I'm going to do apple and I'll open them all up so I'm going to do the chicken nugget first I'll say that the chicken nugget heals 15 health for the pickup mesh I've included a chicken nugget mesh and a thumbnail if you search for thumbnails chicken nuggets in there the name is chicken nugget for the description, I'll say, is it real chicken? Who knows? I'm going to make it weigh 0.1 kg. And that looks good to me. So we'll compile and save. 
So inside my chicken nugget item, I filled out all of the information for the chicken nugget for the baguette. I've done the same. I just changed the thumbnail and the item name and stuff like that. And then for the apple, I'm going to say the apple heals 50. And I've selected some stuff for that as well. Something I forgot, inside of BPNI food, I'm going to set the max stack size to 10. So you can have up to 10 of any food item by default. So inside of player state, I'm going to add the items to my default items. So just click on your narrative inventory component and then add apple, baguette, and chicken nugget. And if we go to apple, we can even go to the quantity and select, say, five to give the player five apples when they start the game. So if we compile and save and hit play, you'll see that we have some apples and we have some baguettes and some chicken nuggets. And if we use them, it actually removes one from our inventory as well. To make the food items actually do something, instead of BPNI food, if you override the on use function, in a real game you'd get your player and get their health and add to their health or whatever. Um, but we're going to do something a bit more simple here because we don't really have a health system or anything like that in this project. I'm just going to do print string, append, and say you healed, and then drag in that health to heal and just plug it in. Once you do that, if you use a food item, you can see it actually says in the top corner here, you healed 15, you healed 20, you healed 50, and so on. It would be really nice, though, if we could actually display the amount of health that an item heals. If I select the apple in the preview window, it tells me its weight and how many of the item I have, but it doesn't tell me how much the apple heals, which is quite a useful thing to know. To add that is incredibly simple. We're just going to go into BPNI food again, go to class defaults, and under stats, simply just add a new stat. And we'll say health, compile, save. And now you can see the health stat appears here, but it doesn't have a value set. That's because we need to use something called string variables. So in BPNI food, I'm gonna use the get string variable function and we'll just plug this in here and we'll do switch on string. So narrative is trying to get that health stat um, but it can't because we haven't implemented it. So just do this, add return node. So if it tries to get that health stat just plug in health to heal and now it'll work. If you select any of your items it'll actually say how much health it heals as well. So that's really useful to be able to do. If you would like to style descriptions, we're going to open up food chicken nugget here. And for our description, it says, is it real chicken? Who knows? I'm going to say, who knows? Who cares? It heals. And then I'm going to do curly brackets. And I'm going to put health inside of there. And because we've added health as a string variable, it will work. If I compile, play the game, you can see it heals 15. So you can actually show them in descriptions as well. And if you want to style text, you can do that because narrative uses rich text as well. So if we do triangle brackets, narrative dot bold, or even bold glow, and we wrap that around chicken, we'll do a triangle brackets end tag here. So you just put these tags around the stuff you want to style. We'll compile and save and play. And now you'll see chicken is actually glowing, so you can style it. Time to add clothing items. I'm going to go into the narrative folder. We'll add a clothing folder. And if you right click, you can see under narrative items, clothing item already exists. So let's make our first clothing item the hoodie. So we're going to click on clothing item. I'm going to say clothing underscore hoodie. If you open the hoodie up, you can see it wants us to select a clothing mesh. If you search for hoodie, I've included the hoodie in the project. And you can even change the material of the hoodie if you like. You also need to select what slot it equips to. There's a bunch that come with narrative and you can even add more if you want, but torso works great. I'm going to search for hoodie for the pickup mesh. For the thumbnail, we've got hoodie. For display name, we're going to do hoodie. Description, we'll say it's a nice warm hoodie. All right, looks good to me. If we compile, save, and add that to our player's default item, so we'll just add another default item. We'll select the hoodie, compile and save. The last thing you need to do is add an equipment component to your player. So you can opt in to using narrative equipment. You don't have to use it, but if you want to use the equipment system, just open up your character and literally just add a equipment component to your character. 
and now it can equip items. You do also have to um, initialize it, and to do that, we'll just go into our construction script, drag equipment in. There's just a initialize function that you have to call. If we plug that in, the equipment basically just tracks what items you have equipped. Um, and so for the leader pose component, that's mesh. And you also need to tell it which clothing slot changes which mesh. You can see like we've got torso, legs and stuff. You just have to tell it which ones are which. So if you drag out and do make map, you can see we've got torso. We add torso in. We're going to add another one. Legs. Plug in the legs. We're going to add feet. We'll plug in feet. And if your game had necklaces and capes and all sorts of other slots, you can support them in here. But we're just going to add those three today. So we'll compile and save. And this time, because you have an equipment component, Narrative will change the UI slightly for you. If we open it up now, you can see it's got a player preview and it's got some sort of item slots next to our player. And if we throw on the hoodie, you can see there it is. It's equipped the hoodie. And you can unequip it too, and it will set it back to the default item. Right, I'm going to duplicate hoodie now, and I'm going to make another item. Brown shoes. So here are my brown shoes. I've filled out all the stuff. I've selected a equipable slot. I put feet as the equipable slot. I'll duplicate the hoodie again, and I'm also going to make pink shirt and blue jeans. So I'll trust you guys to fill out the pink shirt if I open that up. It's got all those settings set on it. And the blue jeans, you can see I've just set up all the jeans and I set the slot to be the legs. Now instead of just adding the hoodie, I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to add the blue jeans. The brown shoes and the pink shirt. And if we compile, save and play, now we can try out all these new equipable items that we've made. If I put on the pink shirt, you can see it works great. And if you try to equip an item that's already equipped, it will unequip the existing one, right? So the equipment component tracks all these slots for you so you don't have to. And there you go. You can see we've already got a really nice little inventory system going. How cool is that, guys? Totally forgot to mention, all of this is networked out of the box if you select two players and we add two clients to the game. This just works. Look at this. I put the pink shirt on and you can see it replicates, right? So if you have a multiplayer game, it just works out of the box. So, so nice, guys. Very, very cool. Very useful. You can see here, networking just works. We didn't set up any networking at all. That's because Narrative Inventory just does it all for you right out of the box. It doesn't want you to have to do all the annoying networking yourself. We just include it right in the plugin. Look at that. So nice. Now I'm going to show you one of the coolest features. I'll go back into a single player game here. So we'll just set the players back to one standalone. And I'll open up the player controller. And I'm going to show you something very, very cool here. If we search for two... I'm going to make it so that pressing the 2 key saves your game. So we're going to get inventory component from target, save. And for the 3 key, we will load the game back in. This is really cool. You guys are going to love this. Check this out. When I compile and save the game, I can save my inventory by pressing the 2 key. Not just that, it will remember my items. So if I eat the baguette, I no longer have the baguette. The save game should remember that. But it also remembers what items you have activated and equipable items are activatable. So if we put some items on, I'm going to press the 2 key to save my game and I'll restart here. So I'll close the game and open it back up. If I press 3, boom, it loads the game back in. It loads all my items back in. You can see I still don't have the baguette because I ate it. All of the activated equipped items, they're, they're right back on my character. This just works out of the box. Super nice. 
if you're using narrative three for your game's quests and dialogues this is where it starts to get really powerful the two plugins have an integration that work with each other and there's nothing you have to do all you have to do is have them both enabled at the same time and you'll notice if you're designing a quest you'll have a bunch of new tasks become available to you so say you have a quest where the player needs to find a battery well you no longer have to even code that you just click on find item select your battery item that you've made or whatever the item is and this quest will just work when you find the battery it will move you to this quest state so the two plugins play super super nice with each other maybe the player has to equip a, uh, a crown to complete a quest step or something equip item select the the equipable in this case i don't have a crown but your know, hoodie there you go done it is really really seamless i'm very proud of the integration between the two it's not just quests though dialogues play really nicely as well again if you have both the plugins enabled at the same time you'll have some conditions available so here's a dialogue where rick wants to trade a battery for a hoodie so how do we check if the player has a battery item add a condition and there's one that comes with the integration uh, has item in inventory and you just select battery so now you'll only be able to say sure if you actually have the battery and we'll just copy this over here we'll make it that you can only say i don't have a battery if you don't have a battery and that's how you set that up look at those conditions super nice and then to give the player the hoodie item there's an event that comes with the integration add item to inventory so we can add the hoodie player's inventory and then to consume the battery item from their inventory there is a consume item event so the integration uh, works so nicely you guys are really going to love the integration if you're using narrative to do your quests and dialogues so here's a little project i made i've just got some more armor items that are off the marketplace so i can't give you these armor items but you can see if i ask for the full set of armor here it is and you can see the dialogue actually gave me this item so you can have npcs give your player items which is really really handy obviously you don't need me to explain why that's useful also inside of the plugins narrative inventory content narrative ui there is this inventory widget and there's a really cool thing you can do in narrative um, here are the categories up the top if you actually hit Control d you can duplicate and add more so for example if i select uh, where is it? Narrative item clothing, equipable item clothing, and just type in clothing. You could duplicate this again and say food, and then select BPNI food from the drop down. And now what you have is the ability to actually sort your items. You can uh, you can filter them. So yeah, just another nice thing you can do with inventory. In future versions of narrative inventory i plan to add um, better sorting and filtering and also list view right now we just have this grid view for the inventory so i'm going to work to get list view in as soon as possible and a bunch of other really nice features so stay tuned and uh, all the updates will be in the narrative channel in the discord so thanks for watching guys and uh good luck if you need any help we'll be here in the discord so see you later